What is up, you guys? I'm going to show you guys how to make this kind of drop. It's um, very popular, and there's a bunch of artists that kind of do these drops. And uh, this is actually uh, sort of a request tutorial. So it's on that one, uh, you know, kind of airport song that's kind of new right now. And uh, this is the song right here, the original. So uh, they, who the person that asked me to do this wanted me to get the little plucky things down, and it's a very unique sound. So I tried and tried and tried, looked through all presets, made a few patches, but uh, I couldn't get really close. So I figured instead of showing them how to make the original sound, I'm going to kind of give them the vibe of it. So this is the original, and then I'll unsolo it and I'll play just mine next to it, and it's similar vibes. So I hope. Uh, he doesn't mind that. So, I figure it's better to show you guys maybe a, how to make your own original drops and uh, kind of what needs to be in it. So really it's three important things that need to be in it. And one of them is actually missing from the original, I think. I mean, the original is a really good song, too. But I feel like what was missing, and this is one of them, you need a nice top lead, a nice sub, and uh, then, of course, just maybe, like, something that gives a lot of space. So just another layer that is all width and space. So I'll start from the bottom. And I'm going to give you guys the massive uh, sub bass. Uh patch so I'm not really gonna go over that one which will be this layer right here all it is is just a sub bass and I just threw on some uh, Bronner tube on t on top of it so I'm gonna give you guys that one and I will probably give you guys this patch right here it's called uh, a case aid lead I think So I'm going to give you guys these two massive patches. All you got to do is click in the link below. Uh, it should be a link to my Facebook, and then you just go there. And uh, you can like my page and then download it. And then if you really only want to just get the preset, then you can just immediately unlike me, I guess. But please stick around because I do throw on a lot of presets. So it benefits you to kind of be watching and liked on my other page. And um, so these two presets will be there. And I'm going to mute the other one now, so just play those two by itself. And they're both playing the same MIDI notes. They're just both playing a F3. And they're just, uh, the pattern that I got from this is exactly the same pattern from uh, the original. So if you want to know how to do that in Ableton, you uh, import or bring in or just drag and drop a uh, song that you like, use it as a reference track. Then you can go to convert. Uh, melody to new MIDI track or harmony I usually do both and see which one is more accurate because the algorithm will give you a close enough uh, MIDI representation but sometimes you just gotta see which one fits better so from that I got these and I just moved in tweaked it slightly and uh, that's how I ended up matching kind of the same timing and vibe as the top and so then that brings me to the silence patch that I'm going to show you guys how to make and um, I'll go over all the effects and stuff real soon, but this is what the silent one sounds like. So this is the layer that I was talking about that adds the space and all the kind of width to the track because the sub will just reinforce the width. So again, this, the massive sub bass one reinforces this one and the nice lead just kind of tops it all off. and. Uh, in the original there's not even a nice lead it doesn't really need it it's kind of awesome just the way it is but if I take out the lead kind of the same vibe as the original but now I like to have just have a nice lead on top of it or a nice little cherry on top and it sounds like this and since it's playing the same thing 
uh, it's not as interesting. I mean, this is a patch that you would probably make into a, a sort of melody. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. And now let's just get into silence with this one. So uh, it's just kind of like making a super saw sorta. So uh, get out silence, go to menu and initialize your preset or initiate, whatever you want to call it. And so now you have a blank uh, preset. And uh, now what you want to do is go up here, bring your voices up to 16 so that you're using all the voicing. And now you're going to bring this first oscillator down an octave. You're going to um, make sure this is a Q pulse. And you're going to bring this up to four voices. Retrig will stay on. Uh, no fine tuning. No, uh, there's some detuning here. So that's at 5.76. Then we're going to uh, bring stereo up all the way. I actually think that's where it is by default. I don't know. I usually move everything around. And uh, that's pretty much it for oscillator one. Now I'm just going to go left and right here. So let's just do the amp envelope, which we're going to copy into part B also. So for the amp, we're just going to leave the attack all the way down. We're going to bring our uh, decay to 6.44. We're going to get that sustain, and we're going to put it at 2.53. Release all the way down. And then just click on the little C here. And then when you go to part B here, just paste it in. So leaves uh, less work for you to do. And now for oscillator 2 in part A, we're going to bring this down an octave as well. We're going to invert this wave. It's just a saw wave. Uh, four voices, re-trigger on. Uh, we're going to detune this to 6.33. And that's pretty much it. No fine tuning. And now let's do our filter A. So filter A is uh, just a regular old low pass that's going to be on the 12 dB slope. And we're going to bring the cutoff to around 16.47 hertz. Rezo at 305, 3.05 and drive is at 2.95 uh, and uh, let's see let's go part B now and then we'll get into all this stuff so for part B actually let me see something real quick okay no so part B uh, for oscillator 1 we're going to bring this down an octave as well we're going to select another Q pulse 8 voices this time retrig will stay on we're going to phase it 73.71 degrees uh, we're going to detune it to 5.24 and uh, that will be it for this one. And again, amp envelope is the same from part A, so just copy that over. That's what these C and P's on top of most of these uh, boxes are. They're copy and paste. Um, it, but it doesn't work from uh, like one track to another. So like you can't copy a silent here and then go into another uh, like track here and then paste it. I've tried. It doesn't work. I wish. And uh, so. Now for oscillator 2 in part B, we're going to just leave it at 0 for the octave. We're going to invert this wave. It's going to be a saw wave. 8 voices, re-trigger on. We're going to detune it to 3.19. And that would be it. And now let's do our filter here. So it's very similar to part A. It's a low pass, except this time it's on 24 dB slope. Uh, cutoff is 8.88 hertz. Rezo is 4.76 drive is 2.43 and uh, now let's do our main filter control here so uh, cutoff is just up all the way and uh, rezo is at 6.81 key track is on up to uh, 4.52 and warm drive is turned on as well and so now let's just do our modulation envelopes uh, there seems to be a lot of things going on here but it's really simple so we're just gonna select a pitch A and B here so uh, we're controlling the pitch to both A, part A and B. And uh, we're going to bring this uh, down to negative 7 so that it kind of works in a minor scale, whatever minor scale you are in. If you're in a major, then uh, you know think accordingly to that. But I like to think of this as like note value or semitones and whatever. So uh, and next thing you're going to do, just kind of cut myself off and continue on. And speaking of cutoffs, bring in a cutoff A and B. So uh, bring a cutoff A and B right under pitch A and B. Uh, so put that around 4.19. And so next, just bring the attack all the way up. Uh, we're going to bring the decay to 4.71, sustain all the way down, and release at 2.01.
and now let's go to our second uh, mod envelope so we're gonna bring in distortion amount so it should be somewhere all the way at the bottom and phaser frequency actually you don't need this one because I turned it off I changed my mind about it so you don't need that one and uh, so just distortion amount and uh, we're gonna put that to the attack to 2.64 uh, we're going to put decay at 4.77, sustain uh, almost all the way up at 9.71, and release at 6.55. And uh, let's see, LFO, oh, we have a little bit of LFO. So that's just on the cutoff A and B. You're just going to bring uh, this little parameter right here next to it, the knob, all the way up. You're going to put the LFO rate to uh, 1 over 4. If you can't get it to show you these kind of numbers it's probably because you're on free and free will give you in Hertz so you don't want that unless you like that um, that just gives you a little bit more control and gives you some more interesting uh, rates but uh, if you want to lock it in and sync it to your song uh, this is the way to go and the wave is a triangle wave the gain is up all the way because it has to be for us to hear the full effect of the LFO and uh, the offset, I don't, I don't even think I moved that. That's still at 6.10, I think. And so now let's go into uh, our distortion here. So it's just a bit crush. So you just uh, type, uh, click on type, and then you select your distortion. And I brought them out all the way up. Dry wet is at pretty much 50%. Uh, I added a little bit of chorus just for a little bit more detune and a little bit more uh, chorusy wideness, I guess. This is kind of what I wanted. So dry wet, 16% around there. Uh, I brought the delay all the way down, rate all the way down, depth to 40%. Uh, it's odd that I didn't bring feedback to at least halfway, but I kind of left it around there. Let me see if it does anything for me. So I'm gonna kind of play this on my keyboard. Well, um, if you want to have chorus on, that is up to you. I'm not noticing it to be an essential or big part of the sound, so I guess I might have been tweaking the preset and uh, might have just decided to throw down the parameter really low just until I could figure out what I wanted to do with it. Right now, it's not doing too much, but if you want to copy what I have here now, so my dry wet's around 13% or so. Um, it's not really doing much again on or off. It's up to you. It's not essential. So maybe off um, But what is essential is the next part and that is the delays for me the delays kind of um, Make it much more wide obviously because that's kind of what delays are supposed to do delay one side from another but if you kind of sync your delays on both sides together, it just kind of has a nice kind of wideness or space aspect that's given to the sound so uh, for this let's start off with dry wet dry wet is around 26 percent so it's I think anywhere from 20 to 30 percent is where you notice the delays at least with silence and where it's not too overbearingly loud and it's not I think the 20 to 30 percent range is is a good range for dry wet um, delays uh, so let's move on to what I set the left side to. The left side is uh, 1 over 8. The right side is exactly the same. It's 1 over 8. So they're both uh, synced in the delay times on both sides. And I like to uh, kind of low cut these a bit too. So uh, you can see that I have mine at pretty much 1.2K, which would be uh, 1205 hertz. And uh, then I have a high cut at 3600 or 3.6k and I turned off the ping pong because uh, I didn't really want that this on this delay so I turned off ping pong um, let's see smears bread I think I nope okay on feedback I probably brought this up to 64% and that's pretty much for that delay let's go to our reverb now so reverb I put the pre-delayed to like 105 milliseconds kind of that's supposed to be 
a little bit synced with the my BPM, which is 128 BPM. There is a, a way to calculate reverbs and delay times. That's uh, 60,000 divided by your BPM, and that will give you a quarter note delay. And so going off that kind of algorithm, I calculated a delay time. I can't remember what it was, but it's I think at this BPM it's 108. And so to make it seem a little bit faster and slightly faster by milliseconds, I put at 105. And uh, let's see, for my damp, I left that kind of right around the middle size. It, I brought that up to uh, 8.69, and dry wet is at 36%. So that's what I did here for this uh, in silence. So what you should probably have without all the reverbs and stuff that I have is something like this. Actually, uh, I'm not using other reverbs. Let's see, yeah, I'm not. I just created this session yesterday to demonstrate all this and so then I just have a sidechain a EQ that's doing nothing and then I brought in this utility plugin to add even more width to it because without it it's very centered and it's sort of too mono for what I want it for again this is the layer that's gonna add all the space to this so I kind of added on utility which is a uh, Ableton plugin uh, you'll find in audio effects all the way at the bottom close to the bottom if you're in logic or FL or any of those just think of it like whatever plugin adds more width it's usually like a plugin that ends up on a master track or something like that so I just added or like you could just pan it out I guess just pan it to your sides away from the center and so uh, I just added like this is a 161% width and to compensate for uh, panning it so, so far out I added almost 3 dB gain because when you pan things out you lose volume and that's usually in 3 dB increments so um, that's what I did there and the effect the effect tricks is what's giving me this little uh, little effect here at the end so I'm just turning on the effect tricks when it plays here so I'll let you hear that it's not exactly the same as the song the original they have some way cool effect I'm guessing maybe a guitar rig or maybe effect tricks but they just had a lot of time to tweak it and stuff to make songs like this I mean they they're so minimalistic and simple but you know you put the hours in to make the details sweet and all that so with the time I was given I was last night I heard, someone requested me to do this and I just maybe put like two hours into this at most and uh, I just haven't had the time to tweak everything but listen to the original and you'll kind of get the idea of what the effect is like so it's kind of like a looper scratcher type thing and then there's also like this high like riser that comes in too so I think the riser is just added on on a separate thing but this is what mine sounds like Oh, that, I wish. So it has the stutter and it doesn't have like the awesome other things. But uh, if you guys don't know about Effectrix, it's a really great plugin for those kind of things. And so let me say, I just have the X loop on. I have, I have, no, these are on. Da, 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 da. Tonal delay is that on? <laughs> Uh, whoops, those are actually all on, so let me add those back in. Actually, stretch was not. Crush is on, and delay is on. So I just closed off my, uh, the little thing up here that t uh, controls how many notes. I think of it like an arpeggio steps. So I just closed it down to four steps. I just uh, lengthened these notes out in between. All of these are default, so none of these are any different than when you open up a you know blank uh, Effectrix. So these are all default, and I just added these here. And then, like I said, I just automated it uh, when it turns on. So now it turns on, and it's the same for all of these. They these other layers have those too. So 
my sub layer has a side chain to the kick and an effectrix, exactly the same one that I just showed you. This one just has an effectrix, and this one has a side chain, a utility, and an effectrix. And there's nothing else going on. There's nothing on my master, nothing like that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Really simple stuff. It didn't take me too long to do. I'm just kind of showing you guys what gets you these kind of vibes and what really takes and kind of hopefully uh, making this kind of stuff look a lot easier to do than what people think. Because what I've noticed with some producers, mainly new producers, or people that are starting to get into this, they really overcomplicate things. And it's when you listen to songs, you know, they're supposed to feel very complicated and supposed to, well, not supposed to, but they're going to feel impossible to remake and they're going to feel immersive and to create an immersive song you don't need a lot of things and usually simple is a lot better so with that all that said thanks guys for watching like subscribe comment uh i think now with since the new google plus youtube thing i think we can now comment on the newer comments but if it's an old comment that happened before the integration of Google+. Plus. I don't think we can comment back on that. So, again, message us if you guys want to reply for sure. If not, leave a comment and we'll check that out too. So, thanks guys for watching. Lights.